Welcome back to Reliable Prepper. In today's video, we're covering everything you need to prepare for potential civil unrest surrounding the 2024 U.S. election. We'll talk about the risks during and after the election, including possible cyber attacks, security threats, and economic disruptions. You'll also get essential tips on personal security, medical preparedness, creating effective communication plans, and staying spiritually grounded during uncertain times. While we hope none of these scenarios happen, it's crucial to be prepared for anything. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future updates. Also, check the link in the description to sign up for my bi-weekly newsletter and get a free copy of my ebook, Surviving Civil Unrest, A Complete Guide, filled with practical tips to help you stay safe. On election day, the stakes will be incredibly high. One of the most concerning possibilities is that cyber attacks could be launched in real time targeting the very systems that are tallying the votes. Voting machines in key precincts could malfunction, or worse, be hacked to display incorrect results. If voters show up and are unable to cast their ballots because the system is down or showing incorrect information, frustration will quickly turn into anger. In an already tense political climate, that could be the spark that ignites unrest in cities across the country. Disinformation campaigns will also be ramped up to an unprecedented level. Imagine receiving a text message or seeing a social media post on election day that says your polling station has moved or that it's been shut down. These false reports can create confusion and discourage people from voting. The worst part is, by the time the misinformation is corrected, it might be too late. If people are turned away from the polls or are given incorrect information about where to vote, it could cause massive frustration and erode trust in the results. Then there's the possibility of economic disruptions that could unfold simultaneously. A coordinated cyber attack on financial systems could freeze assets, crash the stock market, or take down ATMs, leaving people without access to cash. If people can't pay for gas or groceries, their immediate concerns will shift from participating in the election to ensuring their survival. The financial chaos alone could lead to panic, further destabilizing the situation as people rush to secure basic necessities. In this kind of environment, any small disruption can quickly escalate into widespread violence or looting. We also can't ignore the potential for physical altercations at polling stations. Emotions are running extremely high, and the likelihood of confrontations, whether between opposing political groups or frustrated voters, is real. Law enforcement and security personnel will be on high alert, but they'll be stretched thin across thousands of polling stations. A few incidents could easily spiral out of control, leading to clashes between protesters police, and voters. These kinds of confrontations will only heighten the tension, making the situation more volatile as the day goes on. Now, let's talk about what could happen after the election, and this is where things could really start to unravel. If the election results are contested, we might be looking at a long, drawn-out legal battle that could drag on for weeks or even months. This kind of uncertainty can create a power vacuum where neither side concedes defeat. During this period of limbo, supporters of both candidates could take to the streets, leading to nationwide protests. Some of these protests could turn violent, especially if people believe that the democratic process has been compromised. On top of that, we have to consider the possibility of post-election cyber attacks. Adversaries might target critical infrastructure, such as power grids or communication networks, making it difficult for the general public to receive accurate information. If there's widespread confusion about the election results or if people can't access reliable news, misinformation will fill the void. This can lead to even more unrest as people become increasingly distrustful of official reports and believe that the election was stolen. And it's not just the public that could be targeted. The transition of power could be delayed if federal agencies or key systems are hit by cyber attacks. This would create additional instability as the incoming administration struggles to assume control while dealing with the fallout of these attacks. The longer the uncertainty drags on, the more likely it is that we'll see civil unrest continue to escalate, especially if people feel that their voices aren't being heard or their votes weren't counted properly. We also can't ignore the potential for escalating violence. If one side refuses to accept the results or if the government struggles to maintain order, we could see clashes between different political factions, especially in larger cities. These protests could disrupt supply chains, leading to shortages of food, fuel, and other essentials. If businesses close or people lose their jobs as a result of the unrest, the economic strain could add fuel to the fire, 
creating a vicious cycle of instability that's difficult to break. Law enforcement and emergency services will be overwhelmed, trying to manage protests, violent incidents, and public health concerns all at once. This could lead to the deployment of the National Guard or even active duty military personnel to restore order, a move that would be highly controversial. While military intervention might calm things down in the short term, it could also deepen divisions in the country as some people would see it as an overreach of government power. As if the domestic issues weren't enough, we also have to consider the broader geopolitical landscape. The United States is not isolated from the rest of the world and international adversaries like Russia and China could take advantage of our internal distractions to advance their own agendas. Russia, for example, might use this opportunity to push further into Eastern Europe or escalate its involvement in conflicts like Syria, knowing that the United States is too focused on domestic issues to respond effectively. Similarly, China could ramp up its activities in the South China Sea or even make bold moves toward Taiwan calculating that the United States is in no position to intervene. These actions would not only destabilize regions, but also weaken the United States' global standing and alliances. Cyber warfare would be another front where adversaries could strike. Russia or China might target United States infrastructure, not only to create chaos, but also to gather intelligence or plant malware for future attacks. These could be attacks not just on government systems, but on critical industries like healthcare, energy, and transportation. The implications of such attacks would be long-term, potentially weakening the United States economically and militarily for years to come. There's also the risk of terrorist groups, both international and domestic, taking advantage of the unrest. Foreign extremist organizations could stage attacks on United States soil, adding another layer of chaos to an already volatile situation. Domestic extremist groups could also become emboldened, further deepening the civil strife and stretching law enforcement resources to their limits. International alliances could be strained as well. NATO partners and other global allies might question the United States' ability to uphold its commitments if we're mired in internal conflict. This uncertainty could embolden adversaries to test the limits of United States influence, potentially leading to crises that extend well beyond our borders. A weakened United States could also destabilize the global economy as markets react to the uncertainty surrounding American leadership. If the United States is seen struggling with its own democratic processes, it could undermine efforts to promote democracy globally. Authoritarian regimes might point to the United States as an example of why democracy is flawed, using our own struggles to justify their oppressive policies at home. In light of these potential threats, it's crucial to consider security and self-defense. If civil unrest breaks out in your area, your home could become a target and it's essential to be prepared. Start by reinforcing your home's security. Simple things like reinforcing doors with longer screws or adding deadbolts can make it harder for someone to break in. Don't forget about your windows. Installing security film can help prevent glass from shattering, making it harder for intruders to gain entry. Consider motion sensor lights outside your home as well. Criminals are less likely to approach a well-lit area, and these lights can act as a deterrent. Investing in a security system is another crucial step. Modern systems can include cameras, alarms, and even smart home integrations that allow you to monitor your property remotely. Make sure you have cameras covering all entry points, and if possible, choose a system that includes 24-7 monitoring so that law enforcement can be alerted if something happens while you're away. These systems are especially useful when you're home, providing that extra layer of protection and peace of mind. When it comes to self-defense, Consider non-lethal options like pepper spray, personal alarms, or stun guns. These tools can provide protection without the risks that come with firearms. However, if you decide that owning a firearm is the right choice for your family, be sure to get the proper training. Owning a gun is a huge responsibility, and it's critical that you know how to use it safely. Regular practice at a shooting range is essential as is ensuring that your firearm is stored securely and out of reach from children or unauthorized individuals. Create a safe room in your home where you can retreat in case of an intrusion. This doesn't have to be an elaborate bunker, but it should be a secure room with a solid core door, a lock, and essential supplies like water, food, and a way to communicate with the outside world. You might also want to keep items like blankets, a flashlight, and a first aid kit in your safe room in case you need to stay there for an extended period. 
In times of crisis, communication becomes essential, not just for staying informed, but for ensuring that your family and loved ones are safe. Communication plans are a critical part of your preparedness strategy. First, establish a family communication plan. This should include how you'll get in touch with each other if phone lines or cell towers go down. Pre-arrange meeting spots if communication systems are out or designate a specific time for everyone to check in. Memorize important phone numbers so that you're not reliant on stored contacts, especially if phones go dead. Consider investing in alternative communication devices. Walkie-talkies or two-way radios can be invaluable for short-range communication, especially if cellular networks are down. If you're looking for a more advanced option, ham radios can provide longer-range communication, though they do require licensing to operate. Satellite phones are another option that can work even when local networks are offline, although they can be costly. It's also important to have a physical contact list that includes family members, close friends, and emergency contacts. Keep multiple copies in your home, vehicles, and go bags in case you need to leave in a hurry. Establish a communication protocol with extended family and friends. This might include designating an out-of-town contact as a relay point if local networks are down. Make sure you're aware of reliable news sources to get your information during times of unrest. Don't rely solely on social media, as it can be flooded with misinformation. Instead, identify trusted radio stations, news websites, or other communication channels where you can receive verified updates on what's happening. Having access to a battery-operated or hand-crank radio can be a lifeline if the power goes out and you can't access the internet. Prepare for backups and communication power as well. Portable chargers, solar-powered battery packs, or even hand-crank generators can keep your devices charged when the grid goes down. It's also wise to keep spare batteries for radios or other communication equipment so that you're not left in the dark. Now, let's shift to an area that's just as important as security, medical preparedness. When civil unrest or disasters strike, access to medical care can become limited or entirely unavailable. So it's crucial that you have the knowledge, supplies, and tools to manage medical needs on your own. Start by taking stock of all prescription medications that your family members rely on. Contact your healthcare provider about obtaining an extended supply of these medications, explaining that you're preparing for potential disruptions. In some cases, your doctor or pharmacist may be able to prescribe a 90-day supply instead of the usual 30 days. If your medication requires special storage, like refrigeration, invest in a portable cooler that can keep it at the right temperature even during a power outage. Your first aid kit needs to go beyond the basics. Sure, you'll want the essentials like bandages, antiseptic wipes, and pain relievers, but consider adding more advanced supplies. Include a tourniquet for stopping major bleeding, hemostatic agents like Celox or Quick Clot, which are used to rapidly clot wounds, and burn dressings for treating thermal injuries. If you or someone in your household is trained, consider including a suture kit for closing deep wounds when professional medical care is unavailable. It's also worth stocking up on antibiotics, but only under the guidance of a healthcare professional. Certain antibiotics can be life-saving in the event of infection, but they need to be used correctly to avoid resistance. Talk to your doctor about whether keeping a small supply of antibiotics might be appropriate for your family's needs. In addition to first aid supplies, think about chronic conditions and how you'll manage them if regular care isn't available. This might include stocking up on extra asthma inhalers, diabetic supplies, or over-the-counter medications for managing conditions like high blood pressure or cholesterol. If someone in your household uses oxygen or other specialized medical equipment, make sure you have backup power solutions to keep those devices running during an outage. Beyond physical supplies, medical knowledge is crucial. Taking an advanced first aid or wilderness medicine course can give you the skills to handle more serious injuries when hospitals are overwhelmed or inaccessible. Learning how to treat burns, set broken bones, or identify the signs of shock can be invaluable in a crisis. For mental health, make sure you have a plan to manage anxiety or depression during stressful times. Stock up on medications if necessary, and consider incorporating daily mindfulness or relaxation techniques into your routine now, so that you're better equipped to handle stress during an emergency. As preppers, we don't just focus on the physical, we also need to pay attention to our spiritual health. In times of crisis, maintaining a connection to your faith can provide immense strength and comfort. Having regular spiritual practices, whether it's prayer, meditation, or reading sacred texts,
can help you stay grounded and calm when things around you feel out of control. Engage with your faith community, whether it's online or in person. Even if attending a physical place of worship isn't possible due to civil unrest or other restrictions, many churches, synagogues, and mosques offer live streamed services or virtual gatherings. These connections can help you feel less isolated during difficult times, and they can also offer opportunities for mutual support. Encourage your family to participate in spiritual activities together. This could be as simple as having a moment of gratitude each day or engaging in regular family prayers. Spirituality can offer a sense of unity and shared purpose, which is especially important during times of uncertainty. Most importantly, hold on to hope. Regardless of what's happening in the world around you, maintaining a sense of optimism and faith in a higher power can help you navigate even the toughest situations. Remember that while we prepare for the worst, we also hope and pray for the best, trusting that we'll be guided through whatever challenges come our way. As we come to the end of today's discussion, it's clear that preparation is key to weathering whatever the 2024 election might throw at us. We've covered everything from potential geopolitical threats and civil unrest to medical preparedness, security, and communication plans. While we all hope and pray that these worst-case scenarios never come to pass, being ready gives us the power to face any challenges that might arise. It's also important not to let fear keep you from participating in one of your most fundamental rights. Get out and vote. Make your voice heard, because it matters now more than ever. By staying informed, staying prepared, and staying calm, we can navigate these uncertain times together. Thank you for watching Reliable Prepper today. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, share it with others, and subscribe to the channel for more updates. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook for real-time information and be sure to sign up for my bi-weekly newsletter to receive your free ebook, Surviving Civil Unrest, A Complete Guide. Stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you in the next video.